Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to wrap up this week's theme of modern progressive, checking out progressive works in any genre that has been released after the year 2000. Today we're going to be looking at the band Vidu, which I kind of recognized both the band and the album artwork. You kind of don't forget that. But I checked and we hadn't had a Fidu reaction ever. So I did a little bit more digging and we did check them out on a live stream. It was actually a song off this album, which is why I remember the album art. We checked out the track Candy Brain. This was back in June of 2021. So yeah, quite a while ago. I can honestly say I don't recall much about them. <laughs> about their sound or anything like that. It's just that album art is seared into my mind. Let's dive into this, see what F Fidu has in store for us with the track Formaldehyde. When did this come out? 2007, so definitely a bit of a revival stance, emulating the sounds of the 70s prog rock movement. Very chill, relaxed atmosphere. The flute is really helping it keep that uh, that feeling. Lots of little flourishy touches on the guitar. Dun, 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 that little run there adds a little bit of spice to the idea. Got that cross sticking on the snare. Beautiful violin work here. More flute off to the left. A lot folkier than I was expecting, but you know, honestly, I should I should have been expecting something like that, given the violin and flute work. Multiple vocalists, interesting production on this one. A bit more full-bodied, compressed than the other vocalists. Yeah, just really great at building atmosphere. Got the synths in the background. Similar vibe to the intro. So instrumental verse, instrumental verse. Mm, I like the separation of the vocals for the harmonies. The 
the flute filling that in, doo -doo -doo -doo. just filling in that empty space between the vocal lines. Bass pushing us forward. It's interesting, some of these phrases are done in four, some of them are done in six though. And occasionally on the larger concept I'll find a ten, which is also a six plus four. But it will be phrased like four four two. When a solo ends up feeling a bit catchy, that's when I know it's good. The flute continuing on the guitar line. Yeah. So I'm keeping with the 4-4, four, four, but shifting it to... Uh, three, 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 two, giving us uh, still eight beat phrases, just chopping it up differently than the two bars of four. This part reminds me of uh, Polyphonic Spree for some reason. I was kind of hoping they would build off of that, but I don't think they're going to. <laughs> yeah, so that was fun. Goes into the next track, I guess. Very fun track. It has a lot of inspirations to me. There's definitely a lot of Genesis in here, but I can also hear quite a bit of uh, Cardiacs. And even at that uh, one point towards the end, I mentioned it reminded me of Polyphonic Spree, which I think is the most recent <laughs> inspiration I can hear in, in this. Um, I really, I think that was only because of a specific harmony between the two vocals. I think it's the only thing that really led me in that direction. But it is. It, it's a very strong revival uh, effort here to bring back some of the older progressive rock sounds. 
It's uh, very playful. It engages a lot with rock, but also has some folk elements to it, and is very much about the moment, which is it has enough, it has its ups and downs. Very little parts of this song feel like they are concerned about what happens next. The the section that'll come after the one they're in. There is a little bit of connectivity between all of the sections, but it always feels like a last minute thing of, oh snap, you know, in two bars we're going to a new idea. Uh, we should probably do something to introduce that, more so than planning something so early and building into uh, the next concept. Uh, there are a couple of harsh transitions in here, but again, it's, you know, I brought up Genesis, and this is something Genesis does a lot, which is create music for uh, a specific set of words. A lot of the music is there either to expand on what lyrics just said, or to create a soundscape to support what the lyrics are saying currently. Um, and the lyrics tend to have connectivity from section to section as it tells a story, but the music is really only engaged with the moment. What, what, what's being sung about right now? Oh, it's a funny section, so let's play some funny music. And then the lyricist transitions and, and moves the story to something a bit more serious. So then the music becomes serious. And there isn't too much con connection between the two. It's just you have to be along with the story for the ride. It's uh, like I've mentioned this a couple of times, but it's like listening to soundtrack music for a film or something and then complaining that none of the songs seem to work with each other to create a full album. Like, no, you're missing half of this uh, multimedia uh, project here. You're missing the visuals and, and all the story that they entail. So I feel like that's what's going on in here as well. The sections are a lot more congruent and, and they work together in, in a stronger way, but there still is this element of the music is designed for a specific section. And that might be a lyrical decision. It might be a thematic one. Regardless, the sections seem to be a bit uh, separated uh, in, in their actions. And that causes me to have a little bit of disconnect with the emotional resonance where I'm like, okay, this section is laid back and carefree. And then this one is driving and energetic. And then this one's laid back and cared free, carefree. And I, I don't, I don't know how to interpret all of that. It probably helps to have the lyrics in front of me when I do this, but I, I don't first time listens for me are all audio. So I'm kind of left here a little bit confused, although I understood most of the individual segments. Um, but like I said, the music's very concerned about the moment. What are we doing right now? That's as far as my care is. And so we do have a couple of sections with fluidity to them. But for the most part, the song really feels like it's a series of uh, separate ideas. Now we kick off the song with something that takes up a vast majority of the intro. It's not just the intro, it's also a little bit of the first verse. Um, and the second verse kind of does it a little bit. We have these instrumental sections, though, that kind of go in a different direction. But it's this laid-back folk vibe. I really love this. We have a layering of simple ideas. Flute. Violin, guitar, bass, drums. Uh, eventually, we also add in some vocals in here. And we do have some foundational stuff. The bass does that very well. Just kind of laying down a, a simple bass line, not pedal tone, but a moving bass line. Something simple, though, to give us a foundational idea and also the chord progression. We usually have a simple lick from the guitar a different simple lick on a vi on the flutes. Violins tend to sit in the background and give us ornamental stuff alongside, I forgot to mention this one, the synth, which also does ornamental things. Um, the vocals then sit above all of this and give us these lead catchy melodies. It is beautiful how everything works. Instruments will play around with spaciousness. 
maybe they'll play a little lick do 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 and then take a few beats off and in those few beats off somebody else will come in and fill that space when they're done with their lick the first instrument comes back and might play its it's a uh, riff again, or maybe it'll play a different riff. But the idea is that there's spaciousness to this. Phrases are not consistently played. If we have an eight bar, an eight beat phrase, a riff might only be four to five beats of that. Might only be three beats. There's always going to be some element of rest for almost every instrument. And I really love that. It allows different instruments to come in and scoop and intertwine themselves into each other's playing and create something more complex. It's what makes the opening of this sound as, as layered and, and complex as it is. It's because of all the interweaving that goes on. And it's not just a series of lines. They're all looped in and, and scooped around themselves in ways that build off of each other and allows all the parts not be separate layered ideas but parts that uplift each other and i love writing like that it's just so good there's also a plethora of sounds in here as i mentioned we have strings we have percussion we have bowed strings that's our violin we have the flute we have vo two different vocal types not just uh, ranges but also production on them one is a bit um, more ethereal a little bit lighter and the other one comes across as more full-bodied and physical part of that is from the delivery another part is from the production itself the male vocal um, has extra uh, what did I say? compression and distortion not distortion compression on it that kind of makes it feel narrower smaller but very full um, and so we just have all of these sounds coming at us in uh, you know an overall harmonic area that I just kind of associate with folk. I don't know. It's just very light and uh, not whimsical, right? That'd be a good word for this. Now this runs in opposition to the other style that uh, is employed here, which is a bit more of a rocky one. We bring in some distorted guitar rather than that acoustic one. Our synthesizer comes through with a lot of fuzz and distortion to it. It actually has a bite. I don't know what kind of wave they're specifically using, but it's uh, kind of, oh, buzzsaw. That's the one that uh, spikes up and then drops down and then spikes up and then drops down. It's a buzzsaw wave, right? I don't know the actual term for it. <laughs> to me, it looks like, uh, you know, a series of spikes. Uh, and that's, that's the sound this is, isn't it? I'm learning stuff on this uh, production thing. Uh, also, I'm going to laugh when I find out I'm actually wrong, and this is a different type of waveform. Anyways. <laughs> uh, yeah, it has a lot of edge and grit and bite to it. And so most of the other instrumentation is similar. Harmonically, though, we shift to more of a rock set of chords and a rock set of keys um, that employs a little bit more darkness to the song than the the lightness the the levity the dexterity that we have in the folkier sections this one adds just a bit more body and weight and gravity to everything um, and like i said our timbre changes too we have these distorted sounds that come through and we actually get a big series of these around minute five with our back-to-back -back guitar and synthesizer solos I really like these. Uh, I had mentioned that when a solo is catchy, that's when I know I'm in for a good time. And yes, there were some really catchy licks in there. But also, there's just really good phrasing. We don't really have what I think metal heads would consider a shred, but we do have some faster moving licks in here. And we do occasionally sit within those faster moving ideas for a while, but they're always balanced with longer drawn out ideas as a way to create a, a, a tastefulness between showing off and storytelling. And I think that uh, both the guitarist and the keyboard player do a fantastic job at balancing both sides of their playing. There's also a little bit of change in vocal delivery here as well, as uh, both of our vocalists shifted towards more of a projected, full-bodied sounds, and that just kind of fits with the, gr the gravity, the rootedness that we have in these sections. I can't remember if the flute was here. 
uh, I know the violin was still in this section. Bass, drums. Hmm. I don't know. The flute, would I think, would have given away a little bit. It could have been balanced well, but the flute has a very light, bouncy, ethereal sound to it um, that I think could have worked in the section, but definitely works a lot better in the folk section. So, yeah, just reconfiguring all the sounds, their, their sonic palette, uh, to what would benefit this section the best. There's one more thing I wanted to bring up. What was it? Hmm. Oh, yeah. Duh. Groove. Rhythm. <laughs> All of the stuff that basically uh, the drum and the bass bring to the table. I love this. In the folkier sections, it's a bit more laid back. Like I mentioned, the bass does have a little bit of movement to it. It isn't just a static note, but it really doesn't take the spotlight either. It doesn't have big ideas that can push the song forward. It is functionally very foundational. The drums lay back quite a bit as well, not playing a lot of notes per bar and uh, deciding to use acrostic technique rather than hitting the, the snare head which is just a lighter, thinner sound. It doesn't cut through as much. It doesn't have as much intensity or power. We do have some cool rhythms from both of these sections, but as the entire section is a bit more laid back and chill, the rhythmic qualities here are as well. But once we kick it into the rockier sections, we get some very cool stuff coming out of the bass and the guitar rhythmically that really creates strong aspects of groove when I was listening to the folk section, I just wanted to listen to it, maybe a little bit of a head nod to keep a pulse. But when we get to the rock section, I gotta move my whole body, man. It just, it, it invites all of this energy and it comes from the rhythm section. We do have the energy of the, the melodies and the solos and the, the timbres, you know, being a bit more compressed and distorted. But honestly, none of that would work as well as it does without the drum and bass absolutely nailing these grooves down at the bottom. And it's what gives this entire section a direction. And it, it's, a, it's a strong counter to the laid back feeling of the folk section, which is very much, yeah, you know, we don't want to sit completely still. We don't want to stagnate, but we also aren't too concerned with getting anywhere soon. Like, we're cool where we are, man. And like... It kind of has that feeling of just enjoying the moment. But we get to the rock sections and it's all about what's next, where are we going, let's get there. And I love how everything from the timbres to the instruments to the writing to the rhythmic element supports this shift in direction. It's just so well written. I do want to say real quick that this music doesn't match the... Uh, the album art at all i don't know the album art's always kind of creeped me out we have we have a i don't know a kid that looks scared a kid that looks wickedly happy and then a demon all of it on a three-leaf clover and like i don't know man you give me this nice bright folk music is this the same reaction i had last time when we checked out candy brain <laughs> i'm just expecting something totally different from this album artwork i don't know let me hit some lyrics and see what's going on there all right, this is, this is some wild lyrics. Uh, it does match a bit with what's going on in the music, though. So as I kind of hypothesized about the type of uh, musical painting of creating a soundscape to go along with specific sets of lyrics, I think I'm pretty accurate on that. For the folkier sections, um, it says, I can see wind upon the rise. Here, under glass, I can see outside in formaldehyde waiting to set myself free. Then we come to something that is akin to a chorus. We see a variation of this later. It says, up around the river bend, I was separated from you. You became a citizen of a world held like a zoo. One step through the airlock where the chemicals can't get through. Up around the river bend, I was separated from you. So it creates this picture of a world where this uh, chemical, it's colorless, uh, formaldehyde's also odorless, I think. It's flammable, 
uh, and it's also a highly irritant to eyes, nose, throat. Um, the world should not have formaldehyde <laughs> in the air. And so people have to get through airlocks to get to places where the chemicals aren't there, but they are held within these bubbles, these quarantine zones. You become a citizen of a world held like a zoo. So you don't get to exist in the free world, which is filled with formaldehyde, this chemical, but you can be inside of these bubble protected worlds if you would like. And at this point, we were separated. You went inside, I stayed outside. Now here's some really cool uh, imagery, like the ocean drips from the sky. I sit here just waiting to be. I can see specimens in the jars also waiting to be. The idea of the ocean dripping from the sky is a very cool way of uh, talking about uh, what is the name of that process. Water evaporates, goes into the clouds, reforms into water and rains down. What is that cycle called? Anyways, a lot of water from clouds can come from the ocean. So ocean drips from the sky. I think that's a very cool way to word that. Um, but just waiting to be, I, I haven't quite figured that one out. I sit here on the outside waiting to be, I see the specimens in the jars, which is the people in the bubbles. My, it doesn't have to be bubbles. I'm just picturing bubbles. I don't know why I think of like, uh, artificial housing on like Mars or something. <laughs> These bubble buildings from like sci-fi films. I don't know. Um, and they're just waiting to be two though. I don't get that. We come back to the course though. Again, up around the river bend, the specialist, the specialists changed you. You became a prisoner of a world kept like a zoo outside real life waiting for you and for me outside all of our lives awaiting the chance to be again this idea this this waiting to be something what i i don't it, it's an evolution of sorts but i don't know what specifically they're alluding to what are they becoming from here, though, everything changes. I assume that this is where the musical elements shift to the rockier sounds. It says, get away from me. Get away from me now. It's all wrong. It's too late for me. It's too late for me now. It's all gone. You have gone. Will you pray for me all night long? Up around the river bend, Satan's angels fly. From here, we go to the outro says, hey, everybody, don't you know we can go outside? Yeah, we can party in the formaldehyde. I don't quite understand what happened prior to this unless people have been experimented on. The specialists changed you. You've waited for your chance to be altered, to live in an atmosphere of formaldehyde, possibly. It says now we can go outside and party in it. This part I forgot about, we have the separated vocals and they have this cool rhythmic thing going on and just gets repeated over and over and over. And I couldn't make out what it was, but I was hoping something got built on it rhythmically to have this cool vocal bass counterpoint. We never did, but uh, it's repeating HCHO, which I'm pretty sure is the chemical name for formaldehyde. Let me check that real quick. I had this pulled up a second ago. Don't think that I just have this knowledge locked in my brain. <laughs> um, oh no, formaldehyde is CH2O. What were they saying? HCH. Oh, well, yeah. Two parts hydrogen, one part oxygen, one part carbon. Is that what C is? I think so. Um, so yeah, they just, uh, they might've worded it a little differently. Yeah. Yeah. C is carbon. Yeah. So one part carbon, two parts ox hydrogen, one part oxygen, but instead of CHHO, they put HCHO to create this, um, symmetry to it. HCHO, HCHO, um, which I think is pretty cool. It works well. And it's a nice little chant to say at the end, maybe it has extra meaning to it though. Maybe they have an acronym in place for it or something. Otherwise, it's just a fun little tidbit. I, I, it's formaldehyde. 
<laughs> and they're partying in it. We have this fun, groovy rhythm to go with it. Uh, yeah, it's an interesting track, though. Like, all in all, the entire concept of it is a bit out there, but I think is kind of cool. And maybe it's also metaphorical for something else. I don't know. Could have some social commentary to it. I don't see any, but also secondary layer of uh, lyrical interpretations are, you know, they're hit and miss with me. I, I miss stuff like that sometimes. The album is called Doomsday Afternoon, though, so there's definitely some stuff that uh, I think we're going to have some apocalyptic elements to the album, and this song leans in that direction for sure. Those are my thoughts. Badoos, Formaldehyde. What did you think of this track? Was there anything that stood out to you? Anything you'd like to add on to what I said or correct me on? Maybe you just have your own thoughts, opinions, and perspectives about it. Whatever you want to say, put it down in the comment section above that in the description box if you could. In the description box is a link for Linktree. It takes you here. You can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three. See, I, I jumped the gun on that. If you could, it's supposed to be for this section, not for Linktree. Uh, anyways... Uh, that wraps it up for this one. We do have another track we're going to be exploring today. Um, otherwise, I'll be back tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC. We're going to check out a full album. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos. Mm -hmm.